Hello, good evening, welcome to Easy 8. My name's Danny, says it right down there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and this is a show where for the next two hours, I will be painting some of my miniatures, hopefully with some of your company. And actually, as I'm saying that, there's a whole stream of conversation going down there in the live chat. If you're new here, Easy 8 uh, isn't a tutorial channel. There's loads of that stuff out there already on the internet. And I implore you to go and have a look because there's loads of really cool stuff out there. This is merely an online social club where you can come along and paint your models, make some friends and just generally have a conversation without having to leave the comfort of your own home just like me isn't that lovely we all have so much stuff to do and pressuring times and deadlines and work boring yawn so you can come along and paint your bare gray bla plastic 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 um now uh, which is what i intend to do i've not got plastic today i've actually got resin and metal from last week um hi to all the guys in the live chat we've got kez we've got jeff jeff okay, oh, okay it's gonna be one of those days with my voice jeff jeff <laughs> we've got Stafford, we've got Leslie. Hi guys, thanks for coming along. Um, yeah, if you are new here and you like what we do, please do consider sharing the word of Easy8. Um, getting the word out there really helps the community grow. And of course, if you haven't already, push that subscribe button because every little bit that you do really makes a really big effort on this end over here. Um, and we've gone up to 83 subscribers. Um, we've had like a little increase recently uh, and I'm, I'm overjoyed. So thanks very much. If you're one of those people that have subscribed recently, thanks very much. And if you're thinking about subscribing, and you haven't already thanks future you that'd be great um i hope you guys are doing really well i've had a, a fairly busy week like i've been you know driving around the county doing little bits of training and stuff here and there uh got completely lost because my sat nav decided it was going to take me on a massive um goose chase across the county that i know really well but it was just going go here go there go there took me two hours to get to a place that should take me about an hour and 15 that was fun and then on the way back did it again it was great just because i didn't learn the first time around um anyway um if you're working on something this evening if you're going to be uh, doing a little bit of painting a project do let me know i'm genuinely genuinely interested in what it is that you are painting um i get a kick out of this stuff um so and you can either just tell us here in the live chat or in the comments down there that would be great or if you wanted to you could also get involved on the facebook community uh, and there's a link just in the description just down there i'm gonna do a hiccup no i'm all good thanks very much pardon me um yeah so you can just kind of go on over to facebook you can put some pictures up and kind of talk about what it is that you're working on uh, i say it every week but for some reason facebook doesn't allow you to make your own post anymore which is a bit bizarre so you can find this week's schedule because i always make a listing every week for what's going to happen this week uh you can make it as a comment down there and that's what everyone seems to be doing lately loads of stuff going in there lately thank you very much for those people that show me what it is that you're doing some really cool projects going on i just read in the live chat just before i came on the camera that keslin is going to be tonight finishing her capellan mechs and then magnetizing my deredio dreadnought i oh no i was gonna say i didn't realize you got one but you were telling me a little while ago that you did get one and you were um, surprised by the size of it it's actually not as big as you thought it was is that correct am i, am I just dreaming that anyway deredio dreadnought that's kind of cool for those of you that don't, don't know what a deredio dreadnought is it is a forge world design i don't know if they've made it in plastic for um the horus heresy which is the games workshop thing um, I think it's an old um, old uh, resin set from Forge World, but basically it's um, supposed to be like a historic version of the Dreadnought so the shape has dramatically changed um, and it kind of looks like it belongs in, in Mech Warrior I suppose, which I suppose is why you found so much um, sort of fascination with that particular model it is really interesting i really like it it's kind of got like flat um squat sort of chest i suppose sarcophagus and it's kind of pointy is that right pointy um looks like a hot rod and then it's got really big sort of anti-aircraft style guns on the side of it and then there's the whole of other weapons and stuff you can have it's, it's a complete departure from the standard dreadnought model and i really like it so i'll be really excited to see what it is that you're um, gonna do with it it'll be great um just having a little look making sure that i'm not missing anything out today it's quite cold in my studio today. Uh, apparently, England is about, or about UK is about to get like a really cold snap. We're expecting snow. How very exciting. It's either really, really cold in here or really, really hot. Uh, today's one of those cold days. Great. Uh, I'm just going to go through the, um, through the live chat. Uh, yep, cool. Staff says, I'm all good, thanks. Try to put a roof on a 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter house. I'll try to put a roof on. 15 millimeter <laughs> i gotcha cool 
explain no more <laughs> uh no hiccups tonight no no see the problem is, is i come home straight from work my partner's really nice to me and she makes me loads of food and then i eat it and then i rush upstairs and have to do all my tech setup and i sit down and then my food kind of settles so i'm always hiccuping soz it's it's a live stream it's raw it's rough it's ready just have fun with it right um <laughs> uh kez says yeah that's right it's smaller than i was expecting yeah it, when you look at the picture of the model you expect it to be much bigger but you know cool <laughs> had a mishap with a stanley knife says jeff very sore finger oh no uh, i don't know if it's is stanley knife the word that people use all over the world but it's a, it's a craft knife carving knife yeah, very upsetting i hope that it's okay <laughs> Leslie says, oh dear, stupid knife. Yes, the vodka heals all. Vodka helps the healing process. Uh, I don't know if I should be promoting alcohol use. Uh, we all like alcohol, I, I hope. Uh, I assume, I hope. Um, I don't know what kind of a show this is turning into now. Yes, ha have yourself a drink. Uh, and Mike's joined us. Hi, Mike. Howdy, folks. I'm back again. Nice to see you again, Mike. Would love to know what it is that you guys are working on. So do just, just let me know what it is. And, and I'll try to keep up there in the live chat. Last couple of weeks, it's been so busy. I've struggled to keep up. What I'm going to be working on today is um, just trying to pick up from my what feels like a lack of work last week but there was a lot of priming involved and that does take some time as we saw um, so I'm just going to be trying to carry on with my primarily my two Churchill tanks my 15 millimeter Churchill gun carriers and um, I'm going to try my best to get them finished that'd be great that might be ambitious there might be a little bit more to do I think the only thing that I can't do on them whether it's today or in the future eh, immediate future is, is get the decals on them because i just don't own them so i'm going to try and do as much as i possibly can and get some decals on them later one of those things that i need to just get on and, and order i think flames of war is probably the best place to buy them from um and i'm because they're so small i'm not going to like go over the top with all of the um, decals it's just i think with it with a small model it's just important just to kind of have like a few detail things on them so just just the iron cross for uh, the germans or just the allied star for the american stuff etc you know anyway just gonna take you straight over to the workbench um because i just want to get started here we go um so yeah last week i painted both of these churchills here they are uh, with this colour here, Olive Drab, which is the um, the British service, 1944 to 45, um, Olive Drab colour. This is quite a bit different from the uh, American um, Olive Drab, and what I've done with them is I kind of slapped a load of um, Agrax Earthshade on them to kind of get that grimy feel, to get all the details out as a bit of a wash. Um, with all my other tanks, my bigger tank models, my 135th scales, um, I did like proper staining techniques or proper weathering techniques with proper weathering paints and products. However, um, that's kind of an inappropriate thing to do with models of this scale, so I just try to keep it simple. What I've been doing is been coming up into the studio as often as I can, which unfortunately hasn't been often enough, to try and do as much as I possibly can. This is the one that I didn't do last week that I need to do some more on, and unfortunately it looks a little bit poor on the top and it's quite patchy on the sides. Can you see that there? Yeah, not really into that. Um, so today, hopefully, by moving this paint, paint around, might be able to kind of cover that up, uh, hide it a little bit, maybe even agitate it a little um, to kind of shift that pattern around. This is the one that I was doing last week. Um, I've got a lot more on the sides. It's just pulling the details out a little bit more. What I have noticed is just from basically handling it a little bit is that I do have a little bit of metal showing through on this side on this one here. Yeah, it's all kind of all the way around it. There's a, and a tiny amount on this side. It's harder to see here because there's a lot more paint there. Um, because it's metal, the paint just kind of just comes off uh, really, really easily, especially when it's quite fresh. Even once it's dried, it still hasn't really set. And even later, it'll just kind of pull off just with, you know, by picking it up with your hands. Um, and this one here, not so much, but a little bit the same. So I'm going to try my best to um, hide that. It might be that I've got to do a respray. Um, and that won't be so bad. I'll, I'll be okay with that because this paint has dried. It has um, congealed or whatever the term is. It should be set a bit more. Especially when I'm considering that I don't like the way that the, um, the pattern has appeared on here. So uh, what I'm going to do, I think... So I'm just going to see if I can dry brush it out on this one. It's a lot to dry brush out, though. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I should I go for a should I go for a quick respray? Just cover it back over. Doesn't it have to be a complete redo over, does it? 
what do you what do you think i'm, I'm, I'm genuinely looking for help here once i've got that done there's a few details on there that i'm going to pick out maybe like the tow ropes i'll just do those in silver um i'm going to try and do all the little wheels black i'm going to try and be very quick about that because there's a lot of wheels on a church all very very tiny i think they're weird looking things um and then i might brown out some of the details on the back of the engine bay just to make them look a bit grubbier make them look a little bit different and then tracks and then and that's it that, that's that's pretty much all i'm going to do if i see other details on the way then i might you know pick those out but less is more less is more yeah when i compare it to one of my shermans which i consider finished um it's a little bit dusty this one i give him a bit of a dust down with this brush here flick that turn off there we go. You can see the difference in the colour of the two sort of olives, if you like. Um, two olive drabs, very, very different colours. I should get into, into shot. But you can see, not so grimy, but there are still marks and things on him. Looks quite smart with the, um, the decal on there. I could actually give him a bit of a varnish and hide that decal, I think. I never did that in the end. Anyway, I can see that some people are commenting here. Uh, yeah, Leslie's agreeing me. Yes, he can. Uh, as much as I like metal miniatures, the paint can flake very easily. Sometimes, yeah, it's just it's a it's a nightmare. I don't. I mean, you, you like what you like, but I don't. I don't personally understand the the love for metal miniatures. I think it must be just um, not like an old thing, but just it's like a a nostalgic thing. Perhaps it reminds you of a time when models used to be made of lead, um, which I, I I get and, and appreciate and, and totally respect. But I just prefer. <laughs> There's my phone making some noises in the background. <laughs> I have not put that on mute today, have I? Oy. That was Mike putting some pictures up on on Easy Eight's Facebook page. Thanks, Mike. Next time I'll uh, make sure that's muted. Okay, some people are saying, yeah, a bit of a respray on the weird one that says it looks cool as is, but that's just me. Thanks, Leslie. Um, now, Jeff's saying a bit of a respray. Yeah, do you know what? Let's just do it. So I will get this piece of paper out here, which is my spray mat. Uh, and I'm just going to pop him on here. I'm just going to give him a bit of a gentle respray. So I've got my airbrush here. I was using it for another project, a work related project, um, and it had a little bit of dry paint in there. Just give it a clean up before we started today, and it seems to be working well. Fingers crossed, touch wood. So, a little bit of olive drab. Give it a bit of a shake. Get both hands free for that one. I was doing this with some oat milk the other day in the kitchen, and I opened a new carton and had to break the seal on it. <laughs> and uh, I was reading the news on my phone and just nonchalantly picked it back up and started shaking because it was to shake oat milk, but I hadn't put the lid back on. Uh, and then I spent the next 20 minutes picking uh, oat milk out of every place on my kitchen. Um, always, make sure you, always make sure your lid's on before you shake anything. <laughs> it's just, just shake it, man. And then, of course, stick it on the Easy 8 Wazomatic. Give it a waz. There we go. It's got a little agitator ball in there. Really mixes up quite well. Uh, Jeff says, Metal Minis, it's the old guys that like them. Yeah, fair enough. That's what you like, it's what you like, right? I appreciate the nostalgia. I just prefer the, the feel, the, the ease of working with plastic. It's just me. I'm just going to stick a few drops in the hopper there. Um, I'm not going to water it down. I want it to go on a little bit thicker for just a quicker coverage. I just want it to be cheap cheerful nice and quick really uh leslie says you know what i'm not too sure what it is i just think the metal miniatures just have a special kind of a niche can't pinpoint it but they're just kind of cool uh paint everywhere no lid wasmatic <laughs> imagine the mess i'm not doing it i'm not gonna i'm not gonna was with no lid okay i've just got a bit of a flow test okay it is flowing so before it starts to jam up it's gonna get that paint on there I'm just gonna try and focus in that area really Let me just get the sides of the hole done there's that smell again it smells like strong clay but what I'll do once it once it's done I'll um, put it some varnish over it and that should just help keep it fixed underneath there was a bit of pooling underneath the other week and um, I went over a bit of airbrush cleaner and uh, pulled all the paint off. So, 
we'll revisit that, I think. Looks a bit tidy already, doesn't it? Let's flip them over to the other side. Anything on here? A little bit. A little bit. I'm just going to try and be very careful touching him, putting him down on the paper. Do you know what? I'm going to put him to the side. I'll come back to him. Let's go to this bad boy. I'm going to flip the paper over like I did last week because it's just a bit textured on that side. It's a bit rough. It's a bit like sandpaper. Don't like it. Okay, got a little bit down here. Look. Here we go. Do you know what I think I might do? just to give this a little bit of extra time to set so I might just break it up and put a little bit of Dunkel Gelb that dark German yellow on um, my two German vehicles because that will break the evening up a little bit but it also give these little tanks a bit of time to dry first one okay tilt him over make sure that you can see um, some more comments going in uh, lots of different tastes in a place where it's all appreciated yeah man yeah you, you got it yeah, yeah Mike says I, I'm old at least I think I am and I prefer plastic miniatures yeah I think I'm old now I mean that might make my dad Jeff feel a bit um, unhappy but I'm 41 I think I'm in a right place to say that I feel a bit older and I, I grew up with coming out of the, um, the the metal age going into plastic and I, I prefer plastic um, I do like I do appreciate the weight of, of the heavier metals you know so the heavier models like metals and resins and things like I appreciate a heavier model but yeah plastic just easier to work with uh, staff that you on the Baileys again not yet hmm, okay I'm on the hard stuff. Tea. Yeah, I didn't have time to make myself a cup of tea. I'll get one in the break. Uh, Jeff says, Dan, when you finally give in and buy a resin bed 3D printer, uh, you can print your own tanks, terrain, endless amounts of stuff. Yes, I will. I'd like to do that. Um, uh, it's about having the, the time, the space. I've got the money, um, I think. But, uh, yeah, I've got the space to do it, but you, there's, there's a lot of setup that goes with it. Um, and of course, you, you've got to have the time to, to design those things. Now, I can get those designs off of the internet as well but it's about making sure that everything that I want is available um, because I'm not a good enough designer and I could be I could put in that time um, but I don't want to because otherwise I'd be losing out on other things you know what I mean uh, and I don't want to don't want to lose out on other things <laughs> okay I'm happy with how that's looking let's get rid of all this paint that's in there I'm gonna give those guys just a few minutes to sort of dry and um, got a bit too much paint in here. Um, and I'm just going to go over to the German vehicles. And they are right here, my little Hornissa. I probably put a bit too much paint in the old hopper there. Oops. What I'll do is I'm just going to put a bit of water in the hopper and just push that through. Thin that down a little bit. I'll bring in the purge tank. Purge tank. paint set on the airbrush now and I just kind of got to waste it um <laughs> yeah, old you know nothing no nope, fair not going to argue with that <laughs> nobody has time to run a YouTube channel and learn how to use a 3d printer I've got an FDM printer just to the side oh my um airbrush has run out of air um, I've got an FDM printer just over there I do use it um I don't have an awful lot of time to spend designing my things I'd love to, I just don't have that time. Um, I had a lot of fun with it during um, the lockdown when EC8 was kind of born and I was printing visors for the NHS and for just people who needed them, just kind of volunteering what I had and um, I clogged it and I nearly burnt the house down. So that was fun. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff says, just buy the files, no design needed. Yeah, you can buy files. There are, there are also websites where they are free. Um, so I suppose what I really need to do is spend a little bit of time. Here goes the tank. I need to spend a little bit of time just kind of doing a bit of research and just acquiring those files, whether I purchase them or get them for free or whatever. And, um, and then getting a, a printer. I'm almost certain I know what printer I want. Any Cubic, I think, is the brand. Um, but yeah, this not just the printer. You've got to have like the curing station for it as well because the resin needs to be cured. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to. And it, it, like you say, it'd be a great way of just kind of um, filling my own games table, my collections, etc., and making parts and bits and things as well. Awesome. Um, Mike says, "What color will you be priming your purge tank, and which side does it fight for?" Uh, it is currently primed a gnarly-looking grey, and it fights for any side it wants because it's really big. Purge the, purge the demon. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, let's move away from that green color just for a second. Let's go to the German colors, which is just down the bottom here. So I've got German Dunkel Gelb collection. This is a modulation set uh, designed to uh, allow you to create false shadows and highlights. Uh, I love them. It's not uh, a realistic thing, but who cares about that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a bit of Dunkel Gelb base. Can I give that a shake? This comes from the AK range, which I like to think that they are very, very similar to um, the ammo MIG range, which is what I was using for the, the British stuff there. Um, can I give it a shake? Doesn't have an agitator bottle, unfortunately. Uh, ball in the bottle, shall I say? Uh, but I will give him a quick waz. Got You got a waz, especially this one. It hasn't been used for such a long time. It's a really good mix. There we go. I think that'll do. Just want to make sure I've got all that green out of the airbrush because that'll be bad. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give him a light covering. I've got two of these, exactly the same. I'm going to pop these paints to the side because they're kind of in my way. Here we go. And for those people that are wondering, no, I still haven't cleaned my studio. What are you going to do? Okay, so I'm going to concentrate on the inside for a minute. Oh, got a bit of a leak there. Or did I miss the hopper? <laughs> I don't know what colour to do the inside of this. I know that tanks were generally painted lighter on the inside. I just want to get a bit of colour in here for now. Um, I haven't done my research for the inside of a um, an open top German tank like this. I should imagine it still probably would be painted brightish, maybe? Or maybe it would, maybe it's part of the camouflage not to, I don't know, basically is the answer. But a bit of colour in here, because what it will do is even if it's the wrong colour, it will still give me uh, a shadow effect for when I'm spraying in there later with whatever colour I need to. This one's a bit on the runnier side, so as it's building up on the needle, it's giving me lots of spatter. Uh, so I need to be careful with that. If I see it on the model, I just use a bit of the air and blow it around a little bit. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Waz it. Yeah, lots of wazzing today, apparently. Remember what I said last week about just giving a light coat on there and then like almost like it's dust you can barely see that coat and that just allows it to dry and and set properly and then the next coat will go over it better let's give that some cold air Still got the sides to do there, the wheels. Now I can come in strong there, look, lovely. It's a nice colour, I love the Dunkel Girl. It's a nice colour to, to see. But the colour that's really nice to work with is the uh, is the American Olive Drab, that's, that's beautiful.
I think I'm building up a little bit of a blockage inside. It's actually struggling to come out a little. I might pass a little bit of cleaner through in a minute. Nice colour though. I like it. I can't see me using the airbrush all day today, so I'm not too worried about it. Because once I've got this colour on here, I'm going to go straight back to the um, Churchills, get some varnish on them with the airbrush, and then I'm going back to um, back to brush uh, and washes. Yeah, it's struggling a little bit there. I'm just going to loosen off the needle just so I can pull it back inside a little bit and just loosen off any sort of debris that might be building up on the inside. That's a little bit better. Same with the nozzle, just give the, the nozzle a bit of a twizzle. Yeah, it is struggling a little bit. Um, sorry, I just been to the kitchen. Now I have Bailey's so staff. Mike says, I don't think the open top tanks were painted lighter on the inside. It would make them sharp as targets to planes. Yeah, that's that's absolutely what I was thinking. They painted them lighter on the interior of, of closed tanks, didn't they? So that if you drop something, you can see it easier. Um, if you have any idea... Hey, sorry, if you have any IPA, it's amazing for clearing out airbrushes. Uh, you talk about alcohol. Um, I, I did have, I actually used it for clear, uh, for actually stripping down models um, uh, and it was in a container and it's evaporated. <laughs> so I will be getting some more of that. Um, I got it because um, it's, it's a cheaper, easier solution to stripping models. Um, I've been using... Um, game sorry green stuff world's paint remover which is the same price for a similar quantity of alcohol um, it's a bit smellier it's a little bit messier i think you get a little bit more alcohol if you get the if you shop in the right places so i for now on i'll just be using ipa um it's yeah isopropyl alcohol is ipa isn't it not the indian pale ale um <laughs> don't, don't be wasting your beer on paint stripping um yeah, I have sat my airbrush in IPA before. I stuck it in a Sonic cleaner as well, the Sonic bath. Um, that that helps. If I just get the interior done in this colour, then like, like I say, it'll be a nice shadow effect later. Kind of rushing it a little bit now. Just um, kind of want to get the airbrush working. Let's turn him around here. It's actually nice to see these guys with a little bit of colour on them. They've been sat on my shelf and stuff in, in grey for such a long time. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Right, let's move away from German vehicles. Again, I'll clear the paint out here. I'm going to put a bit of neat cleaner through there because it's getting a little bit bleh. Purge tank, here he is. Uh, Jeff says, I just Googled, they seem to be the yellow inside. Okay, I've got loads of source material here in the form of books and stuff books and stuff and I'll have a good old research and find out what colour they are. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time like doing loads of, you know, crazy designs or whatever, but it would be nice to get it, you know, close to being right, right? Um, I use IPA in an ultrasonic bath, strips minis in minutes. Oh, right. That's cool. Yeah, I've got like a big old food container with a seal on it that I put bigger miniatures in, uh, they won't fit in my um, Sonic bath. But yeah, so Sassin, you can get those. Yeah, they're, they're like for cleaning jewellery and glasses and watches and things like that. But basically, they just apply um, sonic pressure all over the surface of it, and anything where air and water can get into just vibrates it right off. Um, tiny bit of dish soap in there as well, just to help um, separate the, you know, particles. It's a uh, it's congealing inside there. That's a shame. Let's um, back to the old days, huh? <laughs> yeah, 
Did you see that? It just flew out the top of the um, the airbrush. There's a blockage in there. The air is finding it easier to come back out the hopper than it is out the nozzle there. I'm just going to loosen off the nozzle. Got a little bit of a cloggage there. I said it was probably in the, in the nozzle, didn't I? That seems to have freed it up a little bit. I can actually see it there as well. Okay. Right, let me just get um, a little cotton bud or something, or a little brush, and see if I can clean that out. Your airbrush was just sick. Poor little guy. Hope he feels better soon. <laughs> yeah. It's just because it was my first ever airbrush, and I've never really changed it since. Um, I've just realised I've left my water, my paint water, in the other room when I was <laughs> filling up my paint water. Fortunately, I've got little bottles of water and cleaner here, which I can use for now. Um, wow. <laughs> this is my first ever airbrush, and I've never really, I suppose, never really looked after it as well as like a professional would. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was learning, man. It's all clear inside there. Yeah, it looks reasonably clear. What kind of a guy forgets their paint water. That's a, that's an easy eight first. <laughs> Blocked nose. Yeah. This is the hardest bit to clean. That nozzle goes right down to the the finest tip, um, and you, you can't put anything through and pull it out the other side. So you've kind of got to you know get like a cocktail stick or a needle or something in there. Preferably not the actual airbrush needle. I just try to get this dodgy old brush in there. Just twist the um, bristles in, and then. Hopefully, come the stuff comes out. Because um, if it starts coming out that end over there, then you've you've got problems really. Anyway, let's um. Hopefully that's cleared it. Got some mucky hands. What I could really do with now is a little glass of water. Uh, just looking at cup, placing cold tap with Bailey's and the hot tap with Jack Daniels. <laughs> So some friends of mine at work, they live there residentially, um, work there residentially, live there. Um, they decided uh, on a weekend where they d had no work responsibilities, that they were going to get some chocolate cereal, like chocolate hoops or something like that. And um, <laughs> they were going to use Bailey's or Irish cream <laughs> as the milk substitute. They did that all day. They were hammered in a really nice way. Uh, just saying, would you buy the same airbrush again? The air, it's not the airbrush that is the problem. I absolutely love the airbrush. It is absolutely fine. It's um, just the nozzle. I just ha I probably haven't treated it so well, not cleaned it properly. And the gasket, which is the seal on the inside here where the needle goes through, is probably, I've, I think I over tightened it in the, in the early days. So therefore it, it, it um, can't create a proper seal. That and the needle is probably well damaged. So, um, all I need really is a new needle set. I've got one sitting in my basket waiting to go, but it's not just the needle that you buy. You buy the needle, you have to have a nozzle because the, the needles will have different diameters um, and you also have to get the, the gasket to go with it um, and they ain't cheap. So, um, while it's been uh, the winter and Christmas and my car went for an MOT, etc., I've just had to be patient with it um, because that whole set's over 40 quid. Um, and while I can afford that, it's just about making sure that, you know, you don't just go spend I have ADHD I will spend impulsively I need to be careful um, yes so see how learning about ADHD has helped me kind of control my life um, so yeah hopefully that seems to be flowing well now now what I'm gonna do <laughs> at this point is I'm gonna cover my other tanks in varnish and that is gonna block my airbrush up especially if it's not behaving very well at the moment so um, let's I'm just gonna go straight to um, matte varnish gloss varnish is, is a good varnish to use if you're doing washes and things like that but i'm just doing sludge washes it doesn't really matter right it's going to give it a bit of a shake but there's no pigment in there just like to give things a shake really okay and i'm just going to pour an amount in here it's just a totally different beast altogether um to to paint it's just, it's just resin liquid resin 
<clears throat> and it's pretty nasty on the inside of the airbrush. What I am going to do is I'm going to give it a couple of drops of thinner. That does help it move and stops it from blocking up so much. And um, perhaps I could put some flow improver in there. I don't know. Let's give it a go. Let's do it. Flow improver. Leslie says, uh, what would be your ultimate airbrush out of curiosity? I know next to nothing about them as I've only ever used them to put base coats on it in the past. Um, I had to do a lot of research when I wanted to buy this one. I, I was dead serious about getting it, so I put a lot of research in. Um, I, I remember initially, my, my initial um, thing was to try to replace the, the brush as much as possible, but I realise now looking back that that's a silly notion. Um, I just kind of wanted uh, you know, to do a lot of base coating as much as I could, to do a lot of like single colour coating, like yellow on my Tyranids, colours on tanks, etc gets the job done faster um, but also I just wanted to be more proficient at it can't wash that off can I <laughs> I'm not leaving the room not until the break um, so yes I did I did a lot of research and I found harder in steam Beck. and this is the evolution it is not the the entry level one it is the one up from that because the entry level one I thought that I could I, I could go higher than that so I did um, it's a really good. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's a really good airbrush. Uh, what I think I've got in the um, in the basket is a finer nozzle, so that I can do more detailed work with it. Because I feel that even though I don't do necessarily do detail work with my airbrush, that is blocked. Goodness me! Even though I don't do detail work with it, um, it will allow me to get finer uh, sort of shading and rendering and things like that. Um, so that that's quite exciting. I can see that there is old gacky paint all on the tip of that needle. So all of that stuff that I just agitated around with that brush in that nozzle has now just been forced through there. So hopefully, yeah, and air is coming out through the hopper, bringing all these bubbles up. It's really struggling to get out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe that off on my finger. Gross. You could use a paintbrush. A paintbrush for what? What do you mean, use a paintbrush? For... Oh my goodness, look at this! Oh, it's been a right fiasco today, isn't it? That's better. Give me a lot of grief. You say I could use a, a paintbrush for um, for varnishing. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> There's Mike appreciating the word gacky. Yeah, I think is that my own word? <laughs> gacky. trying to get a, a quite a liberal coating on the sides because well they're the metal bits right that's where it's most likely pulling off gonna pull off but also just trying to make sure that I do cover most of the rest of the model as well I can see it building up it's not a massive problem if it does I'm gonna paint over it anyway as long as I'm not losing detail which is quite difficult at this stage. It's all right. There's a lot of flat surfaces here. Okay, I think that's that one there done for a minute. Let's come back to this one. Here we go. Uh, I lost you for a minute. The internet fell out. Well, not on my end. Sorry, Ben. Um, I'm, I'm still here. Long gone are those easy A days. Um, Stafford, are you sure your base consumption hasn't changed your perspective? Maybe. <laughs> uh, Leslie says, right, I see. I remember having to take mine apart every time after using it to make sure it was always clean and setting up the needle each time to get the paint to spray correctly. Yes, you have to. Um, it's it's no different than having to you know, make sure that you look after your very expensive paint brushes. Um, you know, you want, you want to look after those, yet you need to clean down um, the airbrush every single time. 
it's um it, it just comes part and parcel of it it is a simple procedure um it can be a little bit time consuming uh, i don't think i've done a very good job of it over the few years of owning it so i've compounded an issue and made it worse however with the knowledge that i've got now um i think that i could do it better so if I get an, a new set, I you know I would look after it more. I'd maintain it better, and I'll still keep this needle, even though it's crappy by you know the standards now. Um, it'll be good for me to go in and do you know like just standard you know primer work or something like that. And then yeah, I've, I've got two. So it's like having a good brush and a not so good brush, right? So yeah. If you like, at the end of the show, you can come and join me on uh, Easy 8 After Party uh, on Discord, uh, where I always like to be for at least for a few minutes at the end of a show, um, so I can talk to you guys uh, and interact and chill and paint with you actually on, on video or by chat. And if you'd like, uh, today I will be spending the time to strip this down and clean it. And if you've got the time and want to, uh, you can come over for the very exciting project of watching me to do that. If, you, if you'd like to see how it's done, um, you can see my um, uh, my sonic bath, etc. It's all very, very exciting. It's not. I've just done the underside of that one there, so I'm going to come back to this one and then do the underside of this one as well. I'm just going to pop him there, just to help keep him protected, because he's going on his tank tracks a lot. Lovely. Just going to get into the front of the glasses and the front armor in there as well. Right. The stuff is flowing well now, which is a shame because I've finished using it, but whatever. Oh, such a shame when it starts to play up, but hey, what can you do? The brush does what the brush wants. There's still paint coming out at the end of it, I can see it there. So I'm just you can just see me just off the side here, I'm just literally just trying to get all the resin out. Okay, some neat cleaner. don't like using large amounts of cleaner it's just expensive but um, I feel that it it needs it there we go quite a clog came out then I think that airbrush cleaner is um, basically 99% um, uh, IPA I was having a conversation with Darren um, a few months back and it was him that said that I was like well I'll just get some a bit easier Another blockage. All I'm trying to do is get the um, the cleaner through. Yeah, I can see more paint in there. Massive lumps are coming out at the end. Oh yeah, like like a big pile of snot. <laughs> You're right, guys. Maybe it's just poorly. It's flowing well now though. Okay, I'll put the needle protector back on and I'll put him in the purge tank because I'm just getting cleaner and varnish and paint everywhere. And he can sit on the side over there. I don't need him anymore. Right, okay, cool. What am I going to do with this mess over here? Uh, I'll just wait for the tanks to dry a little bit maybe. And then we'll come back in and do some, do some washes on them. Right, let's move this. Let's get that out of the way. Don't like it anymore. Yuck. Get rid of my paint. Lovely. Uh, some more comments going in. Oh, I've missed a few. I'm going to scroll back up. Jeff says, uh, if your airbrush don't work, use a paintbrush. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I'm going to be doing now. Um, <laughs> I am old now. <laughs> uh, Kessin says, uh, hull mounted weapons now magnetized. Yay. Did it go on easy? Was it was it an easy job? Did they have the recesses already to do it? Did you have to drill them or cut things away to do it? Was it an easy project? Um, Mike says, Kesson, I saw the photo of what you were working on. Is it a forge, forge weld kit? Hell of a big guns. 
Uh, yeah, I bet it's looking wicked. Yes, Forge World. Forge World. Lots of... Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's rumours that I've heard recently as well that Forge World is going to be, I don't know if the right term, uh, but dissolved and absorbed into Games Workshop Actual, um, even though it's a licensed manufacturer through their sort of overhead company it will their studio will just be incorporated straight into citadel and and, and games workshop so forge world would be no more probably all those artists will be working on you know model kits etc um no mention of bovington Kesson, what is the kit? It looks like a grab tank. <laughs> no, we'll talk more a little bit about Bovington in just a little bit because um, we're going to go back there. Um, I've booked my holiday and everything. Tank fest, says Jeff. Um, Leslie says, sounds like the brush does definitely do what it wants. You've given it some sentience since you've owned it uh, and its own personality and everything. Um, yeah, poor little airbrush guy. Um, yes. It, yeah, it, it certainly has its own personality, um, and I've learned to be patient with it is, yeah, how I would describe that brush. Okay, they are pretty much now ready. I've still got to be careful about handling them. They do need several passes of varnish, um, but that will happen at the end, and now I'm keen to get back on track. So, Agrax Earthshade, here we go. I don't have any water in a... In a um, in a glass on the side so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brush here I'm going to apply it <laughs> and then I've got a little dropper bottle with some water in it and I can use it in my palette to clean it out I'm not going to break that fourth wall I'm not going out the studio fourth wall you know what I mean okay so um oh I didn't cover over that a bit there ah whatever who cares um I'm going to get some color on here so some agrax and I'm just going to slap it on what I was doing last week, which I quite liked, was uh, getting the stuff on sort of almost everywhere and then coming in with a few drops of water and sort of using the water to shift it around. Um, it just felt like a good process. I quite liked it. I don't want this colour to be uh, a dominating filter, so I don't want it to be... Um, I don't want it to basically turn it brown with a hint of green in the background. I want it to be a green tank, uh, and, and then this could be grind dirt and, and details you know it's kind of it's, it's doing several jobs all in one as if I was painting a 135th tank I would be you know doing all the panel lining uh, and then I'd be coming over and do weathering and, and grime and details and things like that as a separate thing on a model like this I've, I have tried to do it and it's just too time too time consuming so um, yeah keep it simple right There we go. I'm just gonna put that over there. There's a few lighter spots around that bit, which I quite like this to go. Yeah, that's nice. Don't mind it having that big patch on the top up there. It does look grimy, oily, greasy, dirty. Not every tank's gonna look exactly the same. Got a big bit on the front there as well. That's why I used the um, the alcohol or the paint remover or whatever it was on the other tank, and I just smeared all the way through the paint. So I, I know to be careful. Cool. Do I need to use a couple of drops of water on here? I don't think so. I quite like that. Um, and what I will do is I will um, just get all of the paint out of the brush as much as I can without my water on it to hand. And I'm just going to go over the, the, the heavy spots, like here maybe, and just kind of pick that up a little bit and just wipe it off on the tissue. Um, make sure that I'm not missing out on the comments here. Now, no, I can find my magnet staff, but I will keep looking as well. Uh, I have to drill out the holes for the magnets doing it by hand, so it's a bit tough, but at least the resin is softer than plastic. Yeah, the, like the Forge World resin as well, it seems, to, it seems kind of powdery, it crumbles away, doesn't it? Um, are you using a pin drill for it, I guess, or doing it by hand? Pin drill, yeah, yeah, I've got a pin drill. I find that can be very appropriate for a lot of things. And I've also got like a, a proper um, proper drill drill. Let me just bring the cable over. So I've got one of these. Um, very, very good and useful, but you know, it, it has its place. So it can be too much, especially on a Forge Weld resin model, might be a bit too aggressive. Pin drill will work quite easily. Uh, I've done all, virtually all of my magnetizing with, with a hand pin drill. Um, <laughs> Mike says if it's by hand you must have vampiric fingernails <laughs> I 
Right, making sure that there's no aggressive build up on the top up here. Because that's where you're going to mostly see the model as well, isn't it, from the top. So I don't want it to look too bad from the top there. That looks cool. I'm going to leave it like that to dry for a minute. Put you over there. And then I'm going to come to this one over here because we had to respray on this one. So let's get some paint on here too. And uh, just checking the time. Uh, we've got a few minutes before it's break. And then I'll go and get my water and a cup of tea. wobbly. There we go. What I can do as well, if, if these turn out too brown because I've applied too much of this stuff, is I can go back to that original colour, mix about a 50-50 mix of transpirator, which is basically an airbrush medium for making glazes, and I can just do like this tiny sort of filtering effect over the top and just ever so faintly bring in a really translucent green reintroduce that green back into it but it will keep all the sort of details underneath so where all the details are starting to stand out because of this wash it won't be lost as long as I don't go too heavy with it and that's a proper technique that I use on the uh, 135th models um, can be a bit of a saviour when you when you go a bit too far see how it's just kind of running in over the top here again so I just want to make sure that it's not going to be ludicrous. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a bit of water, put a few drops in the palette over there. So now I've got a proper watery brush and literally just kind of wash that back away. Okay, dry the brush out and pick those little bits up there. That's looking right, that is. I like it. Uh, and I will let that dry as much as I can, and I'll come in and give it a blast over with the um, hairdryer. If I hit it with a hairdryer now, what's going to happen is it's just going to blow all the watery paint all over the place. And I don't want that. Because that would look rubbish. Just going to do the sides of the tracks there as well. Because I want to. <laughs> There's a little bit of an undercroft in there that has missed some paint, so let's go in with it a bit heavier. That's better. Make sure I haven't ruined the top bit. I like it to run in around the wheels, creates false shadows and grime. Don't really want the green showing up there because actually that would be holes. It's just such a small model. Um, you know, it's hard to sculpt that, isn't it? Especially when they're metal. So one little bit in there just refuses to take colour. There we go. Thank you very much. Do as you're told. Yeah, less of that. So, got some wash on there. We've got some wash on there. Once I've done the wash all over them, what I'm going to do, they look really good on the camera there as well. What I'm going to do is make sure that they're dry, uh, probably come over with um, some varnish on them as well. Um, and then dry brush them. Uh, probably dry brush them the original colour and might make it ever so slightly paler. But it's just kind of doing what that transpirator idea is doing, and it's just bringing that colour back, um, take, stopping it from being so uh, dirtied away. It just brings that green colour back. But it will also highlight, um, so it'll bring out all the details, and it'll look really, really nice. Um, I don't have it to hand right now, but what am I? Um, I did a couple of German vehicles. I think it was like a Tiger King Tiger. Uh, I did, uh, and it just it changed the model entirely. Really, really good. Um, just a few more comments going in. Do like the chat, sure, but the whole front uh, end seemed to have been designed to catch an incoming round. Very strange design. Yeah, you're not the only person to have ever said that. I'm sure. I always thought it was the same. It looks like it's exactly where you would want to shoot it. <laughs> it's 
th there's absolutely no way that shots are going to deflect out of there. I don't actually know much about the Churchill, and I don't know if that was a, a massive problem. I mean, it, I'm sure it must have been. It just seems like a rushed design, like they didn't know how to actually change their old ways. It still kind of got that um, that land tank original World War One sort of feel to it, hasn't it? It, it? I know it doesn't look like that, but it kind of has that vibe anyway. You know, strange. Not my favourite tank. But it was one that was used a lot. Um, I think that my favourite British tank probably has to be... Um, I like the Firefly, but I wouldn't say, necessarily say that that's a, that's a British tank, is it? Um, I, was, I would say the same about the Honey, also not a British tank. Ooh, what would it be? Comet. I like a Comet. A Comet's really good. Yeah, I love a Comet. And the Matilda 2. You can't you can't turn your nose up at a Matilda 2. Cute little tank, that one, isn't it? Um, Leslie says, tanks for potato people. <laughs> They're coming. They shall use their tiny tanks to take over the world. They're just so cute, aren't they, mate? 15 millimeter. I've got a whole, like a little receipt box. I've just got a whole army in them. They're so easy to store. Brilliant. Uh, my base needs a refill. <laughs> uh, Mike says, Jeffrey, it has uh, it has to do with keeping the swing of the barrel within the tank's footprint. Otherwise, you can't swing the turret in a forest. Ah. Ah. Easy 8 Learning Club. Check that out. Right. Weird. Still don't get it, but uh, at least there was some science and reason behind it. Anyway, what I think we should do now is probably just go for a break because, um, well, I don't have any water. So that's <laughs> that's something that I need to go and get. And I could just do with letting those just dry down a little bit before I hit them with a the hairdryer. Could try and get that done in the break as well. Um, the airbrush being a little bit problematic has held me back a little, but I'm hoping that it's going to be behaving enough that I can get at least one more pass with the um, the varnish out later on. It seems to be flowing air fine, but obviously once I've done the washes on them, I want to hit it with a passive um, yeah varnish so that I can do dry brushing on it and then do the tank tracks. And uh, maybe just some pick out some details, but I might be doing that just after the show. Anyway. Um, I'll be back in 10. In the meantime, go get yourself some paint water. Yeah. Stupid.
welcome back. I got my paint water and a cup of tea, and now I feel like I'm ready to start the actual show. <laughs> so welcome back. Um, I hope you had a nice little break. I hope that your projects are going well. Um, I have just moved on to the other side of the Churchills that I've just been doing the washes on. So I just, uh, when I came back up from making a cup of tea and retrieving my paint water, I um, just hit those sides with the hairbrush and hit them. You know what I mean? I've, I've got the hairdryer on them. Um, so they are dry enough for you to turn over and do the other sides. I feel like I'm kind of getting through this nice and fast, but there is a little bit of drying time, isn't there? So you gotta be you gotta be considerate about that. Um so hopefully we can get all the wash done today um and we can um move on to you know doing all those little details, all that dry brushing, whatever. Tracks, as Stafford was say, as Stafford was saying a few weeks ago, tracks are mind-numbingly boring. I'm hoping that I can just um, get a good consistency of paint that covers well and just have done with it. Because you're absolutely right, tracks. It starts off fun because it's a nice, easy strip to do, but actually, with the little patterns and details in there, they can be really problematic. Um, and if you've got as many tanks as Stafford has and you want to go through them all in one go, batch painting, then they can take the mick. So, um, yeah, want to try to avoid having problems with that. Um, what I'm just doing now is I'm, ju I'm just literally getting the, uh, the paint on the side. I know you can't see it right now. What I wanted to do was talk to you about Bovington Tank Museum. I said I was going to. Staff mentioned it a minute ago. Uh, I got some messages coming through um, uh, Easy 8's. Um, sort of private messaging board Stafford and uh, Dave who isn't online today Dave Lester was like Bovington Tank Museum let's go because we've got annual tickets because we've been a couple of times our tickets allow us to just kind of go for free all the time um, and while I've kind of been there and seen everything to me the museum feels like an art museum I can go there and see the same thing that I've seen several times and still be impressed by it as if it's like the first time I've seen it well, you can never get that that feeling ever again seeing the tiger for the first time was quite a thing um, but it doesn't really lose its impact on me um, and I think I, I'm gonna go again because I, I kind of want to use the tanks uh, as reference I want to find the tanks that I'm painting a lot of and I actually want to look at them in a little bit more detail not because I want to paint my 15 millimeter tanks um, with that much insane detail, but I do like to paint um, 135th models and I just find it interesting. Um, you know, why were they painted this way? Where did the dirt gather? I know that's a nerdy thing to say and I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, so if you are interested in going to, tank, uh, to the tank museum, the Easy 8 community are, are going there again um, and we're going to be going on the 25th of March which is a Saturday um, so you've got about uh, three or four weeks so if you want to go you want to come along with us and kind of make your way up with us then then give us a shout get connected either drop it down there in the comments I read everything uh, you can put it on the Facebook page if you want to again I read everything that goes up there and I get alerts directly all the time you can talk to me on the uh, on, on the easier after party on discord if you want to how, however you like drop me a line and I'll, I'll get back in contact with you or I'll pick up the call straight away and we'll talk about meeting up and going there or coming along with us because um, it'll be cool right it always is cool we, we've we've met so many people now going away doing all these shows um, and events and things and it's just it's just nice to get connected with people uh, as Leslie's saying that nerds are cool they are uh, I classify myself as a nerd and when you're not cool you're cool by being cool you're not cool I'm not cool, so I'm pretty cool, and I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that. Chill, man. So yes, Bovington Tank Museum. Uh, while we're on the subject of the Easy 8 community going on road trips, don't forget that Salute 50 is coming up April the 22nd, if I remembered right. Uh, there's quite a few of us in the Easy 8 community that are going to that as an event. We're actually going up there overnight, staying there on the Friday before um, to go and have a social, have some drinks and stuff. We're staying in a pub not too far away, which is going to be great. Um, and yeah, we're going to stay there overnight and then come back on the same day of the show. It's only on for one day. This 
this year. Normally it's on for two at the very least. It is the biggest show in Europe, so I'm reliably told. Um, I'm, I say reliably told. I saw that on their website, <laughs> so hopefully it's reliable. Um, so if you want to go, then you can. Uh, how are y'all getting to Bovington? I like the fact that you say y'all. I say it at work. People laugh at me for it, but I think it's making a resurgence in the, the common uh, you know, tongue of English people, y'all. Um, Darren has joined us. Hi, Darren. Thanks for coming along. Nice to see you again. Um, do you have a son who na whose name begins with S? Uh, Susan. Um, thanks, Leslie. Thanks for thanks for saying that I am cool. Thanks, mate. Uh, Mike says, how are you getting the Bovington car share or train? Bovington is is literally a short car journey for for me and a lot of the crew here. Um, so uh, it, it, it'll be a car journey here. Um, I don't actually know how easy it would be to get to train. It's actually to get to the train from where I live. Um, it's actually a, a half hour car journey just to get there. Um, so if you're going to stay somewhere overnight, then you've got to consider getting to the train station via bus. And that's even longer. Yes, it's, it's mental. I don't live in a well connected place. Crazy. Um, so yeah, buy tank. <laughs> I'd, I'd absolutely love that. We should get an easy eight tank. <laughs> Where are you going to park it? Anywhere I want. It's a tank. Yeah. Um, if only Chris was online right now. That's an old joke right there, isn't it? <laughs> I think I will tell Chris. They would love that. Right. I'm just going to take you back over to the workbench now. Don't forget that if you are new here, you can subscribe. Please subscribe. I'd love it if you shared the easy eight word and that those people come along and they subscribed. Do this. Thank you very much. Public service announcement. Let's move away from there. Back to the bench. Here I am. You can see I'm just working on these two little Churchills here. Uh, I've just realised there's a little bit of like um, coffee staining from the uh, from the previous side there, which just kind of ran over. So I'm just getting a little bit of water on it, just trying to see if I can smooth that out. And I can, and it's working. I don't really mind so much. It looks like grime. It's cool. Whatever. I am going to put um, a smothering of it on the back here because uh, it hasn't got an awful lot. And like I said last week, I do like the backs of my tanks to be quite grimy because it is the engine bay. It's where soot, grime, oil, fuel, it all builds up here. You normally get like big air filters and things on the backs of the tanks, the old fashioned tanks anyway. Um, and they do get really, really grotty. So um, lots of this color here to resemble grime and stuff. There we go. Try and be careful about that overspill here. So I'm just going to go back over that. What I'll do is I'll come in with a little bit of water, sort of break that down. So we've already got a bit of staining there already. Remember, I want them to be green tanks, not brown tanks with some green in it. Um, that one over there is quite a grimy looking tank on the top. I don't know if it shows up so well on the camera. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit, just a little bit extra on the top. Just literally dip the very end of the paintbrush in. I'm just going to move that around a little bit. What I'm trying to do really is just to avoid any patches that haven't seen any wash at all because they'll show up really really bright and clean and I, I don't want that it will look awful so it'll stand out really really quite strong quite aggressively Just lifting off those little patches where um, the wash is pulled up coffee stain example if uh, you, you can see it here look, and yeah just don't want that but if I don't get to it quick enough what happens is you end up pulling the, the wet bit away but it's dried all the way around it and that's left a really stained area but it's left a clean patch in the middle can you see that? A little bit, little bit grotty, a little bit rubbish. Gacky. <laughs> Let me just come in with a slightly tougher brush that doesn't really matter if I ruin the end of it. There we go. Got loads of varnish resin bits coming out of it. whatever cool um making sure that i read everything there was a sherman called the easy eight 
yes there was it's exactly what the show is named after it just sounded cool i liked it uh i liked the tank um so yes I, yeah hey it's an easy show it's an easy eight it's yeah you know it is I'm slightly italian american there um yeah uh mike says darren i think i may have uh, been his teacher at one point <laughs> small world isn't it uh, uh hell yes best vehicle ever and your tanks are looking killer thanks man i uh, appreciate that uh what subject what subject do you teach i shall ask him i think it was at primary school i think it was in the opposite class but i took him for computing lessons grimy as gnarly no longer a teacher by the way I saw the light you know so many people say that my partner uh trained to be a teacher and then decided she didn't want to be either it's a stressful stressful job um like darren says there and i totally agree uh there's a there's a lot of stress in it not everyone leaves because of stress reasons maybe you just decided to have a career change which you're perfectly allowed to do i had a career change i took my current job after being a waste of space for many years so yeah only way is up right Right, so this is the tough bit now, is just getting this brush with all of this wash in the front here. It's, it's really tight, it's really difficult, and I'm, frankly, I'm struggling already. So what I'm just trying to do is just sludge it in there, really. I don't really want to overkill, but I can just, I can go in and remove it, you know, like, like I have been doing. Capillary, action, the bristles. How is everybody else's projects coming? I haven't asked that for uh, since the beginning of the show, and I normally ask at least a couple of times. How how are all your projects going? Uh, Kez is doing well with the magnetizing, I assume. Is anybody else working on any of the projects? I haven't seen Rob this week to find out how their um, ash wastes nomads are coming on. It's a project I'm quite excited to hear about. I like Necromunda, it's a great game. Okay, that's the front of that one done. I'm pretty happy with that actually. I feel like I could go more and more, but because it's in such a shaded recessed area, I think it'll be very hard to see. Um, and I'm quite aware of that. Just trying to make sure that in those deeper parts where the cannon's sticking out of, I want it to be quite thick of, um, the colour in there because it would be full of shadow, it would be really grimy and dark and gross but at the same time I don't want to like overdo it. Alright, you know what, I'm going to leave it like that. I've done a thing, I've done a thing. Okay, you go over here. Just chill out for a minute, just try. And then I'll do the underside of him and it'll be fine, right? Okay, I could do the same with this one. I've got a little bit of staining on the front here, so if I put a bit more on move it around a little bit should be able to hide the the stark edges of it that's that's the problem with with that that coffee stain thing isn't the fact that you've got like a lot of that color in one place it's that it has a really stark contrasting edge it just goes color and then it changes it's, it's not soft and it looks harsh unless it's like trying to be a camouflage thing in which case it would be painted like that probably um this is this is actually an, an effect not a not a design Cool. Okay, got a little bit of pooling at the back here, so I'm just gonna pop the bristles in that puddle. And there too. Maybe I'll apply just a little bit of water to that. There we go. Trying to fight where the where the stain goes is like a constant battle. Wicked. Right. Well, we can leave those like that for a minute. Um, I'm just going to go and check my airbrush, make sure that there's still air flowing through it. Nothing's dried in there. Seal up that paint. I'm going to have a little sip of my tea. Cheers. Happy Friday, everybody. Mm -mm -mm. 
Um, I remember that Kez, actually, before I move on too far, I remember Kez said earlier on, uh, and I didn't answer, can anyone recommend any powered drills? It depends on if you want to spend a little bit, a bit of money. They they can get expensive quite quickly, but they don't go too far expensive, if that makes sense. Like, you can buy some, I was imagining you buy probably very cheap ones that aren't very good quality. And then the price kind of jumps up quite quickly, but doesn't go that, that far. I've got here, Proxon um, is a German brand. I like the German brands. They they do have a reputation for, for building um, quality stuff. I've got the little handheld... Um, uh, like a detail sander and I've also got this this proxen um, like hand drill it's a very good chuck it's very good quality you can tell if it's if they paid attention to detail because the, a proper chuck will have three grabby bits uh, and a cheaper one will have four three offers you better stability locks better locks tighter more secure and there's a sign of quality so there's a little something for you um, but the reason I got Proxin is because the little sand, that little sander, I, I bought that. It was the best one I could find at the time, um, and I wanted to keep it the same because it's uh, German. It has a different power thing, um, and it had the correct connections to little power adapter. That power adapter, you plug all all tools, hand tools, into this little adapter. So I didn't want to buy like another thing with another thing and have lots of things for things that I could just have them all go into one. So I kept with the brand. Um, also, um, Adam Savage uses it. So if it's good enough for the Savage, it's good enough for Easy 8. Um, and it wasn't as expensive as you might think. Um, there is a little bit of an outlay. If you're going to buy the adapter, which if you're going to buy your first piece of Prox and stuff, you'll have to. Um, it wasn't very expensive in the grand scheme of things. It has, um, it has a little switch here, which just means it turns it on. Yeah. Um, and it has no sort of adjustable thing on it you can buy them with just a switch or with an adjustable knob on them i got the one without it because on the adapter it has the adjustable knob on it um having buying the adapter does add the price to it but it is last you a lifetime sturdy quality really really good and the only competitor that comes anywhere near it is dremel and that then just comes down to player's choice uh i love this i think it's great there you go. That's my part of it. Proxon. P O R. Sorry. P R O double X O N. Proxon. Very good brand. Anyway, back to the comments because uh, I can see there's loads going in here. I'm just trying to use up the time while the stuff is drying there. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> super. My finger hurts. Super glue is my friend. Yeah, super glue is great for healing. <laughs> um, uh, I I'm doing well. Just drinking tea. Just chilling before I'm away for a week. Oh, I hope you're going away somewhere cool and fun and nice. Mike says, I'm, I'm infilling all the fiddly bits on my tavern walls where the bricks need cutting to a particular size or shape. Oh, yes, of course, because you're making the um, XPS foam tavern. Oh, I'm so I'm so like excited to see how that comes out. Like, yeah, it's going to be great, I'm sure. Uh, Leslie says, it's what they used to put soldiers back together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And ter terrain builders. <laughs> yep, that's why. Super glue sticks to um, everything else and your fingers rather than the stuff you want it to glue. Uh, just realised that the magnet size I want to use, I've just run out of. Oh no, absolute nightmare! What? Yes, what size do you need? Three millimeter by two millimeter. Just ordered some. Yeah, the magnets that I've got, I've got like a whole different range of sizes, and I'm sure I've got something like that. Um, I just can't find them. Sorry, but hey, if you've ordered some, you've ordered some. It just kind of stops your progress tonight, doesn't it? Shame. Sorry, dude. Um, yeah. Hope that the um, that the the drill is a good enough thing to make up for it. Mm. Okay, let's have another look at these. So, that one there's still a little bit wet. This one here is drying quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in with the hair dryer and just apply a little bit of heat and air. So I'm just going to mute you because you don't want to hear that. It's offensive. my feet up <laughs> it's really cold in the house um okay so there's that one i pulled a little bit off on my finger there but hopefully not too much probably just on the track so i'm trying to hold it in a place where it won't matter too much 
Um, got a little bit of pooling, I can see that's quite thick there. I can try and just try and take that away. If I was to put a little bit of cleaner here, if I am super gentle, I just did little swipes, I might take that down. There we go. Just gets rid of that heavy build up. It just looks a little bit out of place. Hope you can see that. Yeah, that's better. Still some dry, uh, drying bits on there, um, but obviously it's, it's going to take a little while. It's just it's a water paint, isn't it? It's, it's what it's designed to do. It takes ages especially in the temperature in the studio today uh, and then this one here could also do with a little blast but it's a little bit wetter so i'm just going to be trying to try and be a bit more careful with him because otherwise it's going to blow it around all over the place so bear with me again There, reasonably dry. Not dry enough to do any dry brushing on them yet, um, but I can probably blow a little bit of cold air through the airbrush. Uh, and for some reason, that just sort of helps it. I don't know, maybe it's just because it's more direct or more close. More close. It's one of the problems on this show. I try to get as much done as I possibly can because I try to make it more entertaining than just me painting some stuff. But that's ultimately what the show is, right? But it's really dull <laughs> just watching paint dry um you know it, it's just that thing i ha i have to i have to do washes right so sorry if this bit is really not that entertaining for you i i do try got a little bit of build up down there so it's going to come in with a sodden brush full of water just pick some of that up just try and shift in that over spill coffee staining into an area where I want it to go the wheels show on the other side there just for a little bit there we go Darren's got to go happy modeling cheers Darren thanks for coming by I think I have all your magnets here Dan that would explain why I can't find them here uh, Dan in your previous career as a waste of space did you get very far up the corporate ladder right to the top mate right to the top um, yeah and I I took a leave. Uh, I was like, right, I'm going. Cheers, then. <laughs> yeah. So, 16 years ago, almost to the well, to almost to the day, to the end of this month, actually. No, actually, almost to the year, almost to the day. Um, I took a career in working with children in the outdoor activity, um, adventure activity uh, world industry um and now i'm a leader of instructors so i'm an instructor instructor so i train all of those guys i have my own little team i line manage them all so i get to work with kids and i get to work with adults uh, of various ages it's uh, a very fulfilling job it can be um, very tiring and exhausting and um, time consuming um, but you know work while you can right uh, i i love it uh, i i thought that i'd reached a capacity of it i thought i'd kind of reached a saturation point after working uh, as an instructor for five years so I, I left to kind of go and explore you know my career um and i realized it was very difficult in the area that i live in i wasn't prepared to move away um so i went back to retail i actually had quite a good time working then but i you know i had already experienced a very fulfilling job in you know in a sector in an environment that i really uh, really enjoyed and ultimately I, I missed it too much so um i i left that very very good retail job i used to work for nike um and i, and I made some wonderful friends there and they were all very very sympathetic to me when i felt that i had to leave uh, and i came back came back to the industry and i've, I've worked in several departments um 
I love it. I love working with children. I love working with adults. I love the activities and stuff. Um, it's it's an incredible job. And I, you know, looking back to when I was a waste of space, I um, was just kind of bimbling from job to job. It was rare that I'd ever hold a job down for more than eight months. Uh, and I was proud of that. Like, I thought that eight months was a long time. Um, yeah, just, you know, I was, I, was, I was an idiot. I don't think I was a, a harmful person. You know, I wasn't, wasn't a bad person. I was just lazy, man. Um, but then I grew up um, a little bit. <laughs> Uh, I just and then I found work rewarding. So yeah, that's that's my story, man. Um, and I remember when I first started in in the industry because you're doing lots of like cool activity stuff, you meet lots of cool activity people, uh, and you kind of get involved in in cliques of of characters uh, and groups in you know not gangs but you know you, you kind of get involved you know, we live very near the coast so um we we are a center that specializes in surfing uh it's actually one of the few things i don't actually instruct i surf as a leisure activity but i'm not good enough to to run it to run it as a session for other people professionally um so so i don't get involved in that but you know there's a surfer clique i'm a rock climber and a mountain biker and they can be very cliquey um but nowadays actually that doesn't exist so much um and i'm actually very very surprised by the large quantity of nerds <laughs> and, and i use that in a, such a loving fashion but you know back in when i first started it was it was difficult to um find people like that because they were frightened of being like i suppose bullied dare i say they're certainly kind of singled out or you know called out or whatever and uh, schoolyard antics can't deal with that at all but nowadays, like I'm a part of a D&D &D group at, at work. My boss runs it. It's amazing. I love it. It's some great people. It's just great company. Uh, a great company and working with great companies. Fantastic. I love it. Um, so there you go. How does the three inch gun they have work in water tank? Is the Churchill any good? That is a good question. And I can't answer that for you right now. The rule book I have is in PDF form and it's on my phone. Um, I'll have a look. Um, but but I'm bet, I bet you Stafford will be able to find it before I do, so I'm, I'm not going to search for that now. Um, but I bet, I, I, if it doesn't exist, I'll, I'll make it up, and I, I, it should punch like nearly the same as like a Firefly, right? Um, probably a bit slower. I don't think Churchill's are very fast, were they? <laughs> Mike says, the nerds have always been here, it's just that now we feel confident to raise our heads above the parapet. And who do we have to thank? Henry Cavill. Um, I don't like getting behind that sort of media hype, but uh, one cannot dispute the positive effect he's had for anybody with a niche interest hobby. Uh, I find it so fantastic what he has done. Good on him. Good on him. And he's actually said since, to be fair, he said that he was very worried about um, when he first came out with that story about how he was going to be viewed in the public world and by his peers by his colleagues um it's incredible that you, that you have to hide your interests to stay socially acceptable it's ridiculous if you are a nerd it should be a proud thing go and tell everyone and if people judge you for it they are not worth knowing don't really like putting my strong values out there but that i think is on on, on ECA anyway that i think that is something that you just yeah i how dare you <laughs> it's one of those things you know uh leslie says years ago anything that was deemed nerdy you would get bullied for intensely and i love that pretty much anything now is accepted yeah ma'am here here mm. okay cool so we've got 20 minutes left and then paint is drying slowly so um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my airbrush and I, if I just hold it off from a distance here, yeah, way off of camera, um, you, you, like there's an airflow and that airflow will um, help dry the paint. It will, uh, it's not as good as a hairdryer, but the hairdryer is so powerful, it just blows all that water and stuff ar around. What I'm trying to do is just help it sort of evaporate the water a little bit. Help make the surface of the paint become is that is, am i right in saying homogeneous a congealed blob enough that when i do hit it with a hairdryer that it doesn't blow the paint around so much the airbrush does do a good job of it it is cold cold air but it's a small amount if i hold it far away it covers just the right sort of area 
<laughs> LBTQN. Yes, uh, people agree with me. Good. <laughs> Thanks. Um, believe what you want to believe, though. Uh, no, Churchill had an underpowered engine and its gearbox kept breaking. Yeah, I saw you actually wrote that during the break, didn't you? Um, yes. I, I say I, I know very little about it. One of the things that I'm going to go and do when we go to Bovington at the end of March is go and have a good old read and investigate about the Churchill that is there. They've got the crocodile, so it's still a gun carrier. It has a fixed gun unit on it. I don't think it has a turret. It can do because it needs to have all the pipes, right, for the for the thing that it tows behind it, the container. Um, but I, I want to learn things about the stuff I don't know so much about. What I'd like to do, I've still got some 135th vehicles here that actually need a lot of work doing. Uh, but once I've got those done, um, I'd like to get a, a Panzer IV. Panzer IV is my favourite tank. Um, and they've got a beautiful Panzer IV at Bovington, um, numbered 419. Um, it's, yeah, it's just it's just a really nice vehicle. I can't really explain it. It's about the shape, really, more than anything. I think it's an attractive-looking tank. Um, should we be saying tanks are attractive? I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'd like to do it. I'd like to do that. I'd like to paint it up looking like tank 419 or panzer 419 um yeah so i'm going to be going there and really taking stock of of the fewer things I, I, every time you, you can't help it you got to walk around and see everything but i think i'm going to take a bit more time um to actually just kind of stand there in front of them photograph things as, as i feel necessary and just enjoy visiting individual things you know what i mean Especially as the last few times we've been, we've been with new members of the Easy 8 community. One of them I actually took around the whole town and I gave them a tour and I was I almost felt like I was working for the museum. Um, so I, you know, I, I had a great time, but I didn't get to stand still a lot. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, going to go back to the hair dryer. So bear with me while I mute you. There's one. He feels ever so slightly tacky, um, but he would probably be good enough for a dry brushing. So now I'm just going to go back to the other one here. And I'll just give this one a bit of a blast as well. Bit of a blast. That was so hot, my fingers were burned. <laughs> okay, he's the slightly damper one, so I'm going to leave him over there. I'm going to move away from using my really nice brush here. I want to do a little bit of dry brushing. This tissue is a little bit on the wet side, so what I'm going to do... I did just pick my nose there. I had a bit of a wet nose. It's quite cold in the studio. Um, I'm going to... Have I got a fresh piece of tissue here somewhere? Yeah, there we go. Just there. Here we go. A bit of um, kitchen towel. So I can use that to um, get the the paint off the dry brush. And I'm going to use one of Kez's dry brushes here. I'm going to use the larger one. The bristles might not be long enough for what I want to do. This might be a little bit... Um, thinking about it now, probably is the wrong brush to use at this moment. I'm going to give it a go. Why not? So, I'm going to get a bit of the original colour. And I'm just going to put just a small blob of it on my palette over there just out of the shot of the camera um, I'm gonna put a tiny drop of water in the bristles just to dampen it up a little bit because a dry brush is should have a little bit of moisture in there there we go excellent right 
I'm just going to put a little bit of paint in there. Now this paint, because it's airbrush paint, paint is um, moist, it is, it is watery, so um, it's probably going to add to that wet effect as well. So I'm just trying to pad as much out as I can on a piece of paper. Um, just rub it backwards and forwards like that and hopefully remove the majority of it. Test it on the back of my hand. Okay, that's, that's actually pretty good. Let's go to this one here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little test on the top corner where it's the darkest on here. I don't know if my lights are bleaching it out too much, but I can see that it's a little darker in this corner here. And all I'm going to do is just, just run it across the edges and just see if it brings that colour back. I think I... Is it, is it too hard to see? I don't really know. I might need to add a tiny fraction of highlight colour to it. I don't know. Well, it is bringing the colour back a little bit. It's just a flat panel, so it's very difficult to see. I'm trying to hit the corners and um, the hatch there as well. I'm going to see if I can get a bit more paint on there. Might just be that I need to build it up a little bit. It is bringing that colour back again. It is doing it. It's just, it's just difficult. It's a dark colour. Losing a few bristles there, but I can remove those later. There are some recesses still that still have the uh, the stain, the wash colour in there. So I'm trying to be careful about those. I don't want to pick that up with the dry brush. That that will ruin the dry brush effect quite quite quickly. I'm going to be a little bit lighter with the dry brushing on the back like I say I like a grimier engine bay. Just trying to pick up the edges there. I'm going to have to come back to that a little bit more of this. Um, Jeff says the only one that they feared was the crocodile used to shoot the crew if they captured them. Yeah not nice. Uh, it's, it's an, and I quote, it's an attractive tank, I'd like to do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't get to touch that. Uh, uh, it was a nasty weapon. Yeah, it was brutal. You're absolutely right. Uh, no three inch Churchill in the rule book. Mark one, two, three, four, five, what, well, four, six, and seven. Um, is it any good then? Um, yeah. A softer brush. This is a soft brush. Um, yeah, I've got I've got a few others. It might be that I need to use a different type of brush to kind of get those edges a little um, a bit more. This is a very soft brush. It's just very very short bristled, round and kind of bold on the top. I'm making hand gestures that you can't really see there. Um, so I, <laughs> there's a voluminous top to it, uh, designed for different dry brushing techniques. Um, it is it is picking up the edges. It's bringing that colour back again, but I might need to go in with a slight highlight. So I might need to add just like a little bit of white or a little bit of cream colour to it. A very very small amount if I do, um, just to kind of yeah make those details stand out a bit more. Um, so I'm going to come down to the side here and see if it works on this little bit. Make sure I've got no heavier deposits of paint there. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to have a highlight. Not the end of the world. <laughs> Bristles. I'm going to do this all over anyway because it's going to um, blend out a lot of the, the the strong brown colours on there where I've been a bit too heavy. Like I say, it's reintroducing that colour back onto the model. Actually, doing a pretty good job of hiding um, a lot of the the coffee stainings. Haven't been able to get through them as quick as I'd wanted today. I'm going to be staying on a little bit, just a little bit longer at the end of the show for the Easy Eight after party over at Discord. If you want to come and join me, you're welcome to. Um, I've pulled a little bit of paint off just by handling it a little bit there. That's annoying. Um, it's 
why I don't like metal. Uh, so if you want to come and join me while I kind of try my best to finish one up, then uh, I'll, I'll be there. It's not going to be that exciting. That's really frustrating, that little bit there. I'll just paint that on by hand. Just save this bit here at the bottom where the wheels are for last because I can see there's still a lot of paint in there. Um, so what's going to happen as I try to drag the, the dry brush across it, it's going to probably pick that brown colour out. Um, so then I'll have to clean and dry the dry brush. Um, but hey, here we go. Just make sure I've got enough paint on there. Here we go. Yeah, it did a little bit. And now there's there's a difference between the between the two. I, I wonder if you can see that. I mean, my light's being quite bleachy today, but if I bring these both these tanks up, there, there's there's a difference now. This one is is a little bit paler, a little bit lighter. Uh, while I quite like the the darkness uh, of it, uh, it, it definitely looks green. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's softened down a lot of the the very harsh lines of of the washes. I like it, it's good, it's a good colour and that does match quite closely my Firefly. This is a little bit more highlighty, um, but it's certainly different than the American green there. It's got, it's got a very very big difference. Um, do I like it being so pale? It's, it's, it's hard to decide between the two which I like more. Um, I think the problem is, is that this dry brush here um, probably applies too much paint to all the flat surfaces and the highlights together. What I'm looking for, I suppose, is a little bit of this and a little bit more edge highlighty. And I don't know if this brush is going to be the best one for it. Not really explaining it very well, but um, yeah, this, this has got a lot more sort of deeper browns on it. It's a little bit shinier, but that's just because of the wash that's on there. That will soon dull down. Hmm, I don't know. What I'm going to have to do is let that one dry a little bit longer. Actually, as I was stood there, uh, a little bit of that colour has actually leaked out from the from the mantlet in there, and it's made quite a quite a blob. I wonder if you can see that. You see that there? That's actually stood quite proud as well. So, like I did just earlier, let's put a little drop here of um, airbrush cleaner. Just get a little bit on the end of the brush there, absorb that all up. And uh, yeah, just, just agitate that little blob of paint in here. Let's bring my light in a little bit more so you can see it. There you go. Oh, that's a problematic little lump that is, isn't it? I'll get some more cleaner. This is a little trick that Luke taught me. Luke hasn't been on for a long time. I hope you're doing well Luke if you ever watch this. We are coming pretty close to the end of the show as well so if you've got stuff that you want to talk about uh, now is the time uh, to say it <laughs> because otherwise we'll um, we won't be here some comments are going in. Jeff's saying it needs a long hairbrush, I think. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think you're right. As Leslie's saying, I like the darker one. Yeah, me too. Got a bit of a clean patch here now, but that big lump of stain is... <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Right, wash that brush out, get all that cleaner off of there, and now I suppose I've got to go back in with a little bit of Agrax, haven't I, just to clean that, <laughs> to dirty up that clean patch. Look at that. You see it? Ugh. Um, the staff says that the Mark, is that the Mark 7 has armor 12 and has heavy armor, but only six strike. Um, yeah, I don't know what Mark this is. Is it? Is it his own Mark? Have I still got the box here somewhere? 
I don't know what I've done with the box, so I couldn't tell you. Hmm, did I ever get rid of that? I mean, again, I should imagine you guys could probably tell me, uh, with a quick research Google thing out there, was the um, Churchill 6-inch um, gun carrier, well, 3-inch gun carrier, was it... Was it one of those marks? Was it his own thing? Okay, cool. Right, pop that down there. It all needs it all needs drying and, and congealing and everything's a little bit tacky and soft and weird because um, airbrush, uh, sorry, the washes and stuff, they're just not drying very quickly, even with the help of a hairdryer, which is quite frustrating, but that's just the way it rolls, right? Um, if you're going to be doing a lot of sustaining and stuff, then yeah, you've got to be prepared for that. I'm just going to wash this um, dry brush out got to look after it because it belongs to Gez. Thanks, Gez. Let me have a go with it. Just um, loosen up as much as I can with water and a tissue. And then we've got some actual chemical here for it. We've got Paint Purger um, by Artis Opus. And uh, what I do, although I don't know the correct usage for this yet, is I just kind of dip it in there. And then I'll let that soak in for a bit, really. So I'll just leave it on the edge of my palette. And that seems to be doing it well. And then basically I just agitate that by wiping it out on tissue and then just washing it out. Rinse, repeat, basically. Um, we've got this other one here, brush cleanser, but it looks like it has an oily film. Can you see the bubbles in there? Um, and it smells a little bit differently and it doesn't seem to do as good a job, so I use the pair one. Anyway, I feel like it's another week where I haven't got an awful lot done, but uh, yeah, it, <laughs> working with washes, man, it just it just takes time, doesn't it? Leslie's saying, right, it's time for me to shoot off. Thanks again for another awesome show. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks for coming in and seeing you again. It's been nice to chat. I hope you're well and enjoy your time off. If I think you said it was next week. Um, let's, oh, there's a few more comments going in. It's a really good technique, Dan. Looking good, dude. Thanks, Leslie. Cheers. Jeff says, the 3-inch gun was between the 6-pounder and the 17-pounder. It was a 76.2mm, so a 76 in the game, I suppose. I think a 76 is probably a little bit weak source compared to the 17-pounder. It was a good um, anti-armoured gun, but it didn't have the, the stopping power that the 17-pounder did. The 17-pounder punched so much harder. Um, so I, I'd argue that it's probably somewhere between the two. Um, but, you know, we could probably shoehorn them in somewhere. Um, we'd let them dry if I was... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let them dry. They, they need drying, clearly. It's one of those things. It's just going to be a bit more time. What I'll try and do is I'll try and find some time over the next few days. Um, may, you know, over the next week, certainly. Uh, just to come up and just dry brush them and, and get them all done. I'd like to have them done for next week's show so that I can show the end result. But at the moment, I'm just struggling to find the time to come up here. Which is why we have this show. It's here so people can just carve out a few hours of their very busy week. So um, if that's you're finding the same, then yay. <laughs> uh, I'm doing something good for you. Um, I think they were the Mark 1, says Jeff. Oh, so these were the... So would be a standard Mark 1. It would be a Mark 1 chassis with a 3-inch gun in it, right? I was just hoping that the gun carrier would be its own Mark. Then it would be easy to find, right? Um, yeah. Just, yeah, oh, it is, it is the, the Mark 1s, I see. Yeah, cool. <sighs> Trying to keep up with all this live chat. It's very, very difficult on a live show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, do you know what? Let's just come away from here because we're just going to end up babbling otherwise. Babble, babble, babble.
um yeah what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be on discord for you know a short period of time after the show i'm just gonna try and dry these up i might just go uh, see if i can mix up a blend of a highlight green i don't want to go too bright because as shown by that small amount of dry brushing there it does make the tank look brighter and i do like my british green color to be quite dark so um it might be that i filter them back down again that's extra work i don't want to do that um but i would like the highlights to show the details a bit more like my dad jeff says it's probably uh worth using a longer head brush or a longer bristle brush so that's what i'll definitely give a try anyway before we go don't forget salute 50 end of april book your tickets and let me know if you want to come along with the easy eight team uh calling us a team now but it's a community uh, maybe we are a team who knows uh, don't forget if you want to go to bovington tank museum with the easy eight team then you can come with us as well on the 25th of march is the day that we're all going to go down there uh let me know if you want to hitch a ride let me know if you want to meet us there or any kind of questions or thoughts let's have a discussion about it because it's great fun going there um excuse me and hopefully we'll go on a quieter day <laughs> um what else was i gonna say um yes john takax from out of this world models and minis haven't seen him on the show for a little while but you know everyone's got their working lives and, and john is no exception uh john is is a great friend of mine who I, I i met through doing this show has his own channel channel that's a weird way of saying it and the, the, there's a link to it just down there in the description out of this world models and minis uh he's just a really cool dude who just paints whatever he wants he's got lots of kind of uh you know interest like doctor who and warhammer and just kind of it's just a very eclectic um range of interests when it comes to models and just paints whatever he wants and i really like that so every time he makes a video uh, of him painting something up it's a completely different thing um and i was really happy like last halloween which is my birthday he painted up the um uh the, the martian from the 1950s film uh and i'm a massive nerd for uh, for war of the worlds it's my favorite story thing ever i'm obsessed with it uh so that was great to see um he's painted a clockwork dragon that was cool he's done loads of product uh um, sort of reviews on um, Dirty Down products. They're really good. If, you, if you're looking for good weathering products, Dirty Down are fantastic. Uh, it's a one-stop shop for verdigris and rust and things like that and moss. Go and have a little, yeah, cool videos. Um, but lately he's working on a Renegade Knight, the um, the, the super walker from, from Games Workshop. Uh, I've got one that my friend painted up just over there and he's kind of making up his own his own version of it um and i said that on the last week's show i said hey john haven't seen you for a little while hope you're doing well um let us know if you've got any new videos coming up so i haven't seen one from you for a little while and he's actually if you go on to easy eight's facebook page he's put a little comment in there saying hi and he's got a link to his latest video he's got a part one of a multi-part uh project um and i'm looking forward to going checking that out at some point today or tomorrow um thanks john for posting that up we haven't heard from you for ages i'm dying to catch up with you it's been a while um Go and support John. He's a really swell dude, and if communities on YouTube uh, and the internet at large uh, only get the love if you know you take the time to go see them. And, he, and he's absolutely worth every second. He's just a really nice guy. Um, Mike says, uh, Danny, how do we contact you about going to Bovington? Um, you can uh, just follow the links down there to any of the platforms. You can drop a comment in here. Um, even like, you know, after the show's come off of air, um, I'll, I'll still be able to read it. You can hit me over on Facebook as well. Uh, there's links down there to Facebook. You can talk to me through there. Um, and we can turn it into a private chat if you like as well. Um, discord uh if you want i keep pointing to the side but all the links are down there don't know why i'm doing that there's a link to discord just down there where i'm going to be for at least the next 10 to 15 minutes uh, and we can actually have a chat on the microphone or you can type or video whatever you prefer uh so there's lots of different ways to get in contact with there uh if you then want to get in contact with me privately um through those platforms i can help you do that i just don't put that de those sorts of details out live on the show uh or indeed uh recorded because it's just good form right anyway um really looking forward to going to bovington and it looks like the community is getting bigger and it's going to be really really cool so anyway don't forget if you really like what we do here or even just enjoy it a little bit please do share the word of easy eight um it only gets bigger by telling other people and then please push the subscribe button it would make my day if you did uh 83 is a really good number but we can make it bigger i'm sure anyway that's enough from me it's been a great week I feel like i haven't got a lot done but i kind of have so yeah Pfft, hairbrush whatever see you next week stay, stay i was gonna say stay classy who says that who says stay classy be safe stay kind uh keep on painting and i'll see you soon take care see you soon bye-bye
stay classy. What was I thinking?